assalamu alaikum dear students i am here again to teach you the third molar which are left we have studied all the other molars i was in last uh, during the last day so i couldn't post the lectures so we'll start with the third molars which are quite easy uh, uh, here we go so the initiation of calcification in third molar starts at 7 to 9 years of age Uh, so we cannot see the tooth bud uh, before the uh, before the tooth bud of the second uh, third molar before this age so the third molars uh, uh, initiation of calcification jo hai wo 7 to 9 years of age mein start hoti hai and then the enamel completion takes place 12 to 16 years of age and um, we can see the eruption uh, in the oral cavity at 17 to 21 years of age and there is lots of uh, variation occurs in the eruption of this uh, uh, in the eruption age of this third molars so i have told you in my first presentation these are also called the wisdom tooth which appears uh, uh, in the age of uh, um, an individual when it when he has a good sense of good and bad so we call it a wisdom tooth the layman call it a wisdom tooth aqal daar jise kehte hain theek hai the completion of uh, root takes place 2 to 2 uh, to 3 years after eruption of the uh, third molar that is 19 to 25 years of age right the third molars maxillary third molars and mandibular third molars both have mesial contact with the mandibular and maxillary second molars they are non succedaneous teeth as you all know the molars are all non succedaneous and they have got uh, no distal contact and mandibular teeth who is my difference hoga the mesio distal width of the mandibular teeth is more than the buccolingual uh, width and the maxillary uh, third molars has got more buccolingual dimension than the mesio distal dimension right and they are the most variable teeth and among the molars they are the smallest of all and uh, they uh, they are very variable uh, in the terms of crown and in the terms of root morphology right and uh, we uh, if you see in the uh, surgery they uh, there are much more common cases of impacted third molars and they extract and and you can see the variability among the crown and root of the uh, third molars uh, very interesting cases comes in surgery in which we can see the uh, different roots there you can see the root could be fused there could be uh, three roots there could be four roots present there similarly in the crown we can see the different morphology of crown they they are in the maxillary molar the more common is the heart shaped and the rhomboidal shape and there could be they could be as small as a peck shaped you can we can see the peck shaped molar and the in case of third molars right so they are smaller in dimension more uh, uh, most variable tooth and they have got heart shaped more common and the distolingual groove could be absent uh, in the maxillary third molar there could be if it there they it's rhomboidal in shape the distolingual cusp could be present but there there will be no oblique ridge present in the third molars theek hai oblique ridge jo hai usme absent hoti hai and there is a variability uh, extends from peck shaped small smallest uh, crown uh, crown to the large shape crown theek okay? hai and there could be the variability in the roots there could be six roots present five roots present three roots are co commonly found in the uh, maxillary third molar so here we can see the uh, different views of the uh, ma maxillary third molar we can see there is a distolingual cusp this is the distolingual cusp the sorry distobuccal cusp which is smaller than this mesiobuccal cusp right on the buccal aspect from this we can uh, distinguish the quadrant of the 
थर्ड मोलर्स ठीक है राइट और लेफ्ट वी कैन डिटरमाइन बाय दिस डिस्टो बकल कस्प राइट सो दिस इज द डिस्टो बकल कस्प व्हिच इज स्मॉलर देन द मीजियो बकल कस्प राइट एंड इट इज द स्मॉलेस्ट टूथ एंड इट हैज ओनली वन एंटागोनिस्ट इन द मैंडिबुलर आर्च एंड द अदर टूथ that is the smallest uh, central incisor mandibular central incisor which also ha has one antagonist in the opposing arch and these are the only two teeth which has got only single antagonist in the opposing arch all of the other teeth have got two antagonists theek okay? hai we can see the um, root morphology which are the roots uh, they uh, it also has got three roots like other more uh, other maxillary molars and uh, the three roots are in close uh, approximation or they may be fused together here you can see the roots are fused together and the roots could be uh, partially or completely fused together and uh, we can see the occlusal surface where we can see the more supplemental grooves are present in case of heart shaped and rhomboidal both right and these supplemental grooves are present here we can see the morphologies of heart shape which is commonly present and the rhomboidal shape is also common um, the root uh, crown morphology as i have told you the third molars are most variable tooth and uh, clinically um, if they are sound and they get the space to erupt in the oral cavity they can be used um as an abutment tooth in the, in case of uh, prosthesis um this prosthetic mein hum log bridges wagaira lagate hain so if we, uh, if one individual is lucky to have that the sound third molars they can they can be used in the orthodontic and the prosthetic point of view these third molars can be utilized right and there are uh, impaction is very common as you all must uh, have been aware of it ho sakta hai kafi logo ne aap aap logo mein impaction karai bhi ho extract karaya ho to theek hai so isme ye kya if the tooth does not get the space to erupt so they get impacted or they they are unerupted in the oral cavity there could be a hindrance like bone or soft tissue could be present which hinder the eruption of this third molar now today we will study uh, now we come to study the mandibular third molars third molars as you all i have taught you the chronology of the maxillary third molars there is a little bit difference of of one or, or two. one or year uh, one or two years between the chronology of uh, the th uh, mandibular third molar and maxillary third molar so uh, the eruption is uh, timing is same 18 to 21 years the eruption timing is same for the uh, third the uh, mandibular third molar that is 18 to 25 years of age uh, sorry the 17 to 21 years of age and the root completion takes place between 18 to 25 years of age and these uh, mandibular third molars also has the, it has two types like that of maxillary third molar one type is same as of the mandibular second molar that is four cuspid that is four cuspid and the type 2 is five cuspid that, uh, that is similar to max, uh, mandibular first molar jisme humne five cusps ko padha tha that all were functional or same the type 1 is uh, the second molar which you you have recently taught dr jamil has taught you very well that is four cuspid of uh, uh, mandibular second molar it has got more uh, secondary uh, grooves uh that was uh, present uh, that is present on the occlusal surface of the ma mandibular third molar so uh, sometimes we call it a crenulated surface that it is a wrinkled it has got a wrinkled appearance in the maxillary third molar it also uh, you uh, i have taught you it also has the same more supplemental grooves uh, sometimes it is difficult to differentiate is from the primary uh, grooves and uh, there is uh, two roots commonly present sometimes they are fused together uh, and they are 
they are the uh, deflected towards the distal surface uh, distal, they are deflected towards the, the distal direction so you have uh, uh, to uh, to differentiate the quadrant uh, between uh, in the among the third molars is a bit difficult so there is a buckolingual dimension is uh, more on the mesial surface than on the distal surface mesial surface pe buccolingual dimension zyada hoti hai as compared to distal surface from which you will be able to differentiate the quadrant side of the mandibular third molar the mandibular third molar are highly uh, variable tooth in which there is uh, a variability present between the cusps and the roots of the mandibular third molar the cusp can vary uh, four to five in number yeah uh, it can also vary to up to the six cuspal uh, cusps number and the roots are also uh, i have recently uh, did a research on the third molars in which the roots vary up to six i have uh, myself noticed the six number of roots in the third molars as the cusp varies there is different uh, groove pattern and uh, uh, fissure pattern present in the mandibular third molars where there is a, as an odd number of uh, cusps there is a different type of groove pattern like it has zigzag pattern you can see here this is a different uh, uh, cusp uh, groove pattern and uh, in the four number of cusp we have got the same second molar wala pattern hota that is a plus shaped groove pattern is present when the cusp uh, number increases the groove pattern changes itself right so uh, there are different groove pattern present as the cusp variability takes place the variability in the cusp takes place so um uh, there is uh, in the crown morphology different groove pattern is present different number of cusps is present and the uh, uh, mesial buccolingual dimension is more uh, than the distal buccolingual dimension right so the roots are highly variable uh, in the mandibular third molar the uh, the number of the roots as you can see there is abnormal curvature could be present in the mandibular third molars like the uh, it has more distal uh, ab distal curvature or could be uh, fused together the roots are fused together there could be increase in the number of roots increase in the uh, there could be accessory canals are commonly found in the mandibular third molar uh so uh, the, there is highly variation present in the roots of the mandibular third molars okay and the length is uh, commonly the third molars have got less length as compared to other molars in the oral cavity this is a diagram representing the different views of the mandibular third molar here we can see this diagram i have taken it from margaret j this diagram you can see more supplementary groove is present there is uh, uh, the mesial cusps are uh, uh, are larger in size than the distal cusps right the, these are the these are the uh, mesial cusps these are the mesial cusps which are larger in dimension than the distal cusps right and we can from this view we can uh, differentiate the quadrant side of the mandibular third molar here you can see the fused roots the two roots are uh, present which are fused together and they have got a, a distal uh, deflection in their roots the abnormal different uh, distal deflection here we can see this type is uh, the type 1 kaun si type ye type 1 is the uh, four cuspal type in which which is similar to mandibular second molar type 1 theek okay? hai and the type 2 is the five cuspal type in which there is a distal cusp present like the mandibular first molar here uh, it is more upright uh, the mandibular mo uh, molars are more upright 
and uh, as oppo uh, which is uh, opposite to the antagonist which is uh, uh, the maxillary are uh, more towards the buccal side right and um, if the molars are sound and the person is lucky to have a sound third molar they can be used as an abutment or for orthodontic purpose here we can see the uh, the roots uh, root comparison of the mandibular the crown root uh, and crown comparison of mandibular third molar and the ma mandibular second molar so this is a diagrammatic in which there is a fused roots there is a difference between the crowns of the roots and uh, the distal uh, area of the mandibular third molars uh, is the area of a uh, supernumerary uh, supernumerary molars uh, which can be present on the distal uh, aspects of the mandibular third molar but the uh, supernumerary tooth is hardly found in these days as we don't have uh, 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 the third molar doesn't get the space to erupt in its proper place so supernumerary to, uh, to teeth are can, can be present in uh, uh, in some people uh, but it's hard to find the supernumerary fourth molar which is present uh, uh, on the distal aspect of the mandibular third molar the agenesis of the third molar is commonly found which uh, uh, in which the third molars are missing the the, uh, the people don't have as congenitally congenitally missing and the um, third molar tooth bud is not found in the uh, oral cavity uh, of the uh, many individual 25% uh, of the population does not have uh, third molars in their oral cavity and uh, uh, and it can be re uh, revealed in the radiograph of the or the or the uh, opgs of the patients in which the third molars are commonly missing so the anomalies of the third molars they are congenitally missing agenesis of third molar takes place they are impacted here you can see in the picture there is an uh, a soft tissue covering the uh, occlusal surface of the uh, this of this third molar here you can see this is the gingival uh, more uh, covering the occlusal surface of the third molar and it causes the hindrance of this third molar to erupt in the uh, oral cavity and we call it operculum the distal the third molars are difficult to clean and uh, many care, care, they are commonly curious as they uh, as we don't get access to clean the third molars on the distal aspect and there are many periodontal problems present in the third molar uh, the super uh, numeri tooth ka jo maine aapko bataya hai this is the area where a uh, um, super numeri tooth can be present that's a which is the fourth molar which is not commonly found but this is the area where the supernumerary tooth can be present now this is a very good diagram of an impacted tooth here you can see the third molar which is causing much problem to the other molars as well this is a third molar which is in a big big problem it does not has the space to erupt in the oral cavity maybe the jaw size is less or there could be a soft tissue hindrance and uh, uh, it is positioned against the other tooth like this 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 is positioned against the other tooth or alveolar bone which causes the hindrance to erupt this uh, a third molar into the oral cavity and if this occurs it may causes damage to this neighboring tooth and uh, it also causes the baaz log patients aate hain ki hame is daant mein second molar mein takleef hai hota kya hai there is a third molar which is causing constant pressure on the second molar and uh, the pain occurs and patient cannot recognize the where where it comes from so wo kehte hai ki peeche ke daanton mein mera jo hai dard hai and Uh, it is very painful condition uh, baaz dafa it is, and when it occurs it is necessary to get surgical removal of this uh, third molars theek hai and uh, if does not it does not uh, occur it will cause 
bone resorption it will it will make uh, uh, um, other uh, pathological problem to the uh, adjacent teeth here we can see the different uh, impactions in this radiograph uh, there is mandibular and maxillary third molar which is obvious this is the these are the maxillary third molar and this is the mandibular third molar which are which does not which are impacted and they don't get the space to get, uh, to erupt in the oral cavity and it is causing the pro it, if it does not it needs a surgical removal uh, otherwise it will cause problem to the uh, bone and the adjacent tooth okay so uh, there is a, this is an example of impaction and there could be congenital it could be con congenitally missing ki ye jo hai aapka these uh, tooth buds are not present these are not uh, uh, revealed in the diagram these third molars so the third molars will be missing in the radiograph and the person will have uh, it con congenitally missing third molars theek hai here is a uh, this is the diagram in which the third molars are in close approximation with the inferior alveolar nerve here you can see and it may cause the problem to the uh, uh, it may cause the problem in the surgical removal of these third molars okay and will it will impinge this uh, the inferior alveolar nerve and will cause much pain in these patient and it causes much pain in these these patients right so this was all about the impaction and the anomalies of third molars i have discussed the morphology with you i hope you guys understand it after a long time i uh, i recorded this lecture and i'm feeling very good about it uh, after a long illness uh, that i am able to uh, record my lecture for you guys uh, so i hope you guys are getting my points now we will move towards the in which i will show you the uh, extracted third molars these are the third molars which i have collected from the surgical uh, surgery department and here you can see the different variation in the uh, crowns and roots of the third molar here you can see the crown abnormal, abnormal number of the uh, these cusps and the roots some of them are fused together some are smaller and some uh, have got abnormal number of roots so the third molars are extremely variable as i have taught you they have got wrinkled appearance or sub many supplemental groups are present here i have observed it in, in different extracted teeth uh, so you guys if you guys are interested you you can also go and you can also do a, res a research on these third molars on the morphology of the third molar different number of cusps and groove patterns you can study in the on the extracted tooth on the third molar so if you anybody is interested in the research um uh, research of third molars they can contact me and we will do a research on the third molars right thank you uh, uh, thanks for you guys uh, now our, our morphology is almost finished only anomalies are left and uh, i will tell you about the gross differences about um, on uh, between the deciduous and permanent uh, teeth right